Hello. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Face.
Good morning to you too, Mr. Flores. Let's see, two more minutes. Okay, it says eight o'clock. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, this is our last full week of class. Next week is Thanksgiving. And after Thanksgiving, we only have one class day. But we are almost finished with uh, our material, so we're gonna be fine. Uh, apparently, Mr. Plant's having internet problems. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. I posted a new homework assignment uh, yesterday on Blackboard, so it's there for you. Um, this is the next to the last one. There'll be one due next week, too, probably shorter, but that will finish out all of our material. Okay, any questions before we get started? Okay, let's go back to talking about exponentials and logs. Gonna share my screen. And let's see, and that's my other class. Okay. Let's do a graphing problem. You have, I think, four of those uh, on this week's homework. And now that we know about the log and the exponential function, these new functions, we can handle them the same way we handle other ones, just that they've got new properties let's see this one involves e to the x so let me sketch the graph for e to the x quickly first it looks like that okay of course that's not what i'm graphing i want to graph x times e to the x all right so let's go through our usual process let's get the domain the intercepts and so on and so on and so on Okay, so domain, that's always a good starting place. Well, the domain of e to the x is all the reals. You know, it's got an asymptote coming out here. Goes up forever. 
Uh, so the domain of x times e to the x is all the reals. Okay. So this function is going to be continuous over all the reals. Intercepts. Uh, Y-intercept. That's when you look at f of 0. Okay, well, that's going to be 0. X-intercept. You set f of x equal to 0. And that says x is 0, too. <laughs> so I think probably 0, 0 is uh, the intercept. Yeah, both axes. Um, let's see, because x times e to the x is 0 says x is 0 or e to the x is 0. e to the x is never 0. Okay, e to the x, it's got a horizontal asymptote, y equal to zero, but it never reaches it. e to the x is always positive. So x equal to zero, y equal to zero. Origin's going to be on the graph then. Uh, let's see. Asymptotes. Well, you can't have a vertical one because the domain, if it's continuous over all the real. Um, but what about horizontal? Okay, and that means I have to look at two limits. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, and the limit as x approaches minus infinity of f of x. Okay, if either one of those is a number, then we do have a horizontal asymptote. I'm not recording. Let me go back. All right, I'm sorry. Nice catch. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, while I'm here, let's see, is anybody else trying to get in? No. All right. All right, so... Now I'm going to go back to my notes. Okay. So, well, I'm not going to repeat all that. Sorry about that. I, I try to put it down on my notes every morning just so I'll remember to do it. But I still forget sometimes. All right. Let's check the limit as X approaches infinity. That's the limit as x approaches infinity of x times e to the x. And, okay, that's a product of two functions. Now, we don't have any rules about how to integrate a product of two functions. But we do have rules that tell you about the limit of the product of two functions and also the derivative of a product of two functions. So, yeah, this is just going to be and this. Now, of course, you could get something, well, you could get an indeterminate form out of this, but it's not going to happen here because the limit as x goes to infinity of x is infinity in fact, let me just write that separately. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, nope, 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 nope. Don't want that. Let's see. Don't want that either. Where's my, there it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't like writing things that are imprecise. Basically, let me look at these individually. This is what we would call plus infinity. And so is the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x. In fact, e to the x goes to infinity fast. Okay, We're going to talk about that today. This word exponential, exponential growth. We've been hearing it for nine months with this pandemic. We're going to learn what it means today. It is not good news when you're having an epidemic. Um, okay, so both of those functions go to infinity. Will a large number multiplied by a large number is a large number. This is not indeterminate. Okay. Um, in fact, I really shouldn't have written this statement either. I don't object if you all write infinity times infinity is equal to infinity, <laughs> but I'm not going to write it because infinity is not a number. You don't multiply them together, but the limit is infinity because there's no question. This number is getting big without bound. This number is getting big bigger, faster even than that other one, in, another, other one is without bound. Big number times big number is a big number. <laughs> the limit's infinity. So no, no uh, horizontal asymptote out of that, but I still need to check this one, okay? What about the limit as x approaches minus infinity of x e to the x. Okay. Oh, we haven't had L'Hopital's rule yet. Uh, but that's, oh, uh, yeah, we haven't. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. you. This is an indeterminate form, okay, because... The limit as x approaches minus infinity of x is minus infinity. And the limit as x approaches minus infinity of e to the x is zero. That's where you have that horizontal asymptote. Remember, e to the x looks like that. Okay, so what's happening here? This is the zero times infinity form, okay? Like zero over zero, we talked about that before. That's a form, it's not a number, it's a form. Or infinity over infinity. And why is this indeterminate? Well, the question is, how fast is the x going to zero versus, or, or rather, how fast is the x part going to minus infinity versus how fast e to the x is going to zero? Well, it turns out that e to the x overpowers x because it does stuff so much faster. Um, but, yeah, let me just tell you that this limit is zero. And I guess I better check all those others. Yes, because we have not talked about L'Hopital's rule yet. That would give you a nice tool to check these. But we're not going to talk about that, about that until next semester. Okay, so we have a horizontal asymptote of uh, y equal to zero. And it only applies to the negative direction, okay? But we've got one. All right, so we did domain intercepts asymptotes. Next thing is to look at the calculus.
calculus, the y prime. So y prime part. We have f of x. And if I take my derivative and get my critical numbers, I can get my intervals of increase and decrease and my local maxima and minima, just like before. So f prime of x, use the product rule here, derivative of x is 1 times e to the x plus x. And what's the derivative of e to the x? Zero. No. No. E to the x. Yeah, e to the x. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, remember, this is a, kind of an extraordinary property of this function. It is its own derivative. Ln of 1 is 0. Okay. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, so... That's f prime. Again, f prime is always defined. So no critical numbers from that. Okay. Uh, but we can also set f prime equal to zero. And that says that one plus x is zero or e to the x is zero. That never happens. E to the x is always positive. Range of e to the x is the positive numbers. But this can happen. x equal to minus one. All right, so. Do my y prime number line. I only have one critical number. And let's see, I want to see what whether f prime is positive or negative. Well, e to the x is always positive. So it all depends on that 1 plus x. If I put in, say, x equal to minus 2, I would get minus 1 and n for that 1 plus x, and that's negative. So the function decreases there. If I put in a zero would work, I get positive. Okay, positive, positive. Okay, well that turned out to be easy actually. Okay, so let's see. That means that if decreases on minus infinity to minus one, it increases on minus one to infinity. And we have a local max minimum, which would be f of minus one, which would be minus one e to the minus one. Okay, remember you put your minus one back into the function because the function itself gives you points on the graph. The derivative you use to tell other things about the function, where it increases and decreases, where you get your local maximum and minimum. Okay, so we have that information. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and start sketching. I like to yeah, you get so lost in the derivatives and everything, you forget about your goal. Oh, a grid would help. I don't know. I want that. All right. So a grid would help. All right. All righty. So there's my y-axis. And my x-axis, and maybe, let's see, well, I know that the origin's on there. 
That's both intercepts. That's a point on the graph. I know another point on the graph, the one where the local minimum occurs, okay? And that's minus one uh, minus e to the minus one, which is minus one minus one over e. That's another point on the graph. Okay, so I'll call that minus one. Uh, and one over e, e's about 2.718. So more or less a third. Okay, good enough for our purposes. Um, so minus about a third. I'll call that right there. Okay, that's my local minimum and it actually that's pretty much going to mean that it's an absolute minimum too because what we've got is that the graph decreases and then it increases it increases from here on and we know it goes up to infinity here we also know that y equal to zero is an asymptote okay so it but it decreases over here so it's going to do something like that. Any questions so far? This is a little bit easier than some of the ones we have done before, actually. So the next thing, okay, so this is my, yeah, you can get a crude, a crude but pretty accurate picture just at this point. And sometimes you get lost in the computation of the second derivative. Yeah, make sure you get at least get your first derivative stuff plotted. But this all right, this second derivative is not bad. Okay, let's see. So let me remember what the function was and remember what the derivative was. I think that was right. Yes, okay. And then I can get the second derivative. The derivative, okay, product rule again, derivative of x plus 1 is 1 times e to the x plus 1 plus 1 times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. So factor out e to the x. And there's a the second derivative, okay. And again, this one is always defined. So you don't get any critical numbers out of F double prime not being defined, but F is. Um, and well, I do get a critical number out of setting F double prime equal to zero though. Probably you can see what it is. E to the x is always positive, but x plus two can be negative, can be zero uh, when x is negative two. Okay. So then a number line for y double prime. And minus two is the only possible. Well, point of inflection, but let's check concavity. Let's see. So a point over here. Oh. Yeah, it's all going to depend on that x plus 2. E to the x is always positive. So if I put in, say, minus 3 for x, I would get a negative 1 for that term. So that makes the whole thing negative. That's concave down. And then if I put in, say, 0 over here, that would get two plus zeros plus two concave up. So the function is concave down 
on minus infinity to minus two. And after that, it's concave up. And it changes concavity, so minus two does give you a point of inflection. Minus two f of minus two, which would be okay, f of minus two is minus two e to the minus two. All right. Uh, which is leave it in the form it is, or you could write it as minus two over e squared. And e squared is between four and six, four and nine, excuse me, closer to nine. So this number is going to be a little bit above that minus one over e. Ah, oh, let's put it on the graph. So minus two, e to the minus two. Let me see if I can exaggerate it some more. Yeah, now I know that there's this point of inflection there. Okay. And that's kind of the way it's drawn, but let me try to try to exaggerate it more. Okay. I redraw it. It's concave up. Well, not yeah. Okay, it's concave up starting, oh, wait a minute. It's increasing, and it's concave up starting here, actually. Okay. Oh, that wiggle button along there. Trying to exaggerate some. Okay, so that looks concave up. It's concave down, except that that doesn't look like the minimum anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's concave down from on this piece over here. And that's, yeah, and it, you're just going, oh, no, 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 no. All right. My hand touches the eraser, and there, there goes everything. Okay. It's concave down on everything over there. So that's what it looks like. And actually, that not that hard. I mean, not that tedious, <laughs> like some of these problems. Any questions? Can you all still hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Well, that's you have four homework problems that are along these lines. Uh, I'm going to do one involving the log function tomorrow. But today I want to start talking about exponentials and logs to other bases. Okay, and actually for the natural log and the natural exponent, I'm gonna put the whole word there. Functions. The base is this number E. And I think we'll get to see why, why that's natural <laughs> today. Yeah, why would you pick that base? It's an irrational number for goodness sakes. Um, 
but it really is. But let's just let's just look at this function. Two to the x. Now that is an exponential function. with base two, okay, let's graph it. And I don't need negative numbers because two to the X can't be negative either. Let's see, how about some coordinates, some points? Um, how about, let's try minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. And probably, eh, let's see. Okay. So, well, why don't I start right there at zero. Two to the zero, any non-zero number raised to the zero power is one, right? That's an algebra property. Two to the one that's two to the first power, that's just two. Two squared, that's four. Two cubed is eight. Two to the minus one, well that's one over two. Two to the minus two, that's one over two squared is one fourth. And two to the minus three is one over two cubed, which is one eighth. Okay, so okay, I'm going to stretch out the x axis stuff and compress the y axis stuff. One, two, three. Okay, yeah, because th these numbers are changing a lot faster than those numbers are. Okay, so points. Two to the zero is one. That's going to be what I'm going to call one. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, two to the minus one is a half. Two to the minus two is a fourth. This gets a little bit hard. 2 to the minus 3 is 1 eighth. And this would continue. You've pretty clearly got a horizontal asymptote in the negative x direction. I'm going to connect the dots. Okay, goes out that way. Then the other direction, 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 squared is... Four and two cubed is eight. Okay, well, it kind of looks like e to the x. <laughs> it's not equal to e to the x. Let me let me try to compare. E is greater than two, so two to the x is going to get a big faster. Let's see if I can kind of roughly sketch. Well, e to the zero is one. Um, this would be about be up there. 2.7 e to the first power. This curve is going to sit above this one on the right and below this one on the left. But yeah, well, 2 to the x is another exponential function, okay? Exponential function, as x goes to minus infinity, value of the function goes to zero. Uh, as it goes to plus infinity, the function goes to plus infinity. So they all share that property. But this one, 
it's easier at least for the integer values to get the actual points on the graph. So maybe in a way that seems less alien. Um, but okay, this thing of exponential growth. Look at how you came in from minus infinity. Okay. And your, your Y values were really close to zero. They're close to zero. They're close to zero. And it's like, uh-oh, they're not close to zero anymore. You reach one, and then it doubles, and then it doubles. It, yeah, it doubles in the next one unit. It doubles again in the next one unit. It doubles again in the next one unit. That's what's happening with this virus. And that's what they mean when they're talking about exponential growth. We're in this piece, okay? And that is not good when you're talking about diseases. Okay, but let me also compare two to the X with X squared. This is an exponential function. This is a polynomial function. And both of them grow. As X gets large, both of them get large. But this one gets large a lot faster. This has exponential growth. This one's got polynomial growth. Let me sketch X squared. Okay, and I'll make it blue. Uh, and I need some more points for these same values. Okay. Let's see, so nine, four, one, zero, one, four, nine. Now, mm. They've gone out further, I guess. Let's see, four here, five. Let's see, so four here. Ah, the same. By the time you get to five, though, that's 25. Uh, 36, six over here. Two to the six is 64. But these numbers are growing a lot faster than those numbers. Okay. You have to go out of ways to see it. Okay. So, eh, I mean, how about I skip the negative numbers for x squared? Eh, no, don't skip them. <laughs> All right, so it comes down. Here's minus three. It doesn't be there. Uh, three squared. Four. Um, one. No. Okay, wait a minute. I'm getting confused here. Two goes to four. That's right. One goes to one, three goes, that's right, okay. And then it's zero. So X squared, totally different going to minus infinity. X squared goes to, it's supposed to be concave up. Uh, and then it's symmetric, okay. Oh, that's supposed, to, that's two. Oh, I forgot my, no, I didn't. Okay, <laughs> okay, my scale. That point should be on there, the point should be on there. Uh, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it crosses here. And then three goes to nine. So this is for a short period of time above this uh, black line. But that doesn't last, okay? But okay, I'm a little bit off my 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 scale here. But by the time I hit four, 
two to the X is going to be two to the fourth is 16. Well, four down there is also 16. So they're the same at time four. At time five, two to the fifth is 32. Five squared is 25. At time six, two to the sixth is 64. Six squared is 36. If I keep going, okay, these numbers getting big a lot faster than these numbers are getting big. This would be, oh, not E, two. This is going to be 128, and the next one is 512, and the next one is, oh, I skipped one, 256, and then 512. And by the time you're 10,024, with x squared, Okay, 7, 49, 8, 64, 9, 81, 10, 100. Yeah, by the time I hit time 10, x squared is only at 100. 2 to the 10th is 1,024. Exponential growth means you're, it just takes off at a certain point. Well, that can't continue forever because the virus would have taken over the universe if, if it could continue in that form forever. With the virus, eventually, everybody gets the virus or enough people get it. Uh, and then we have antibodies hopefully the, our bodies get used to dealing with it basically and the the virus starts to die out although if it's going to be like the flu it'll come back every year um or okay we're trying to artificially induce antibody production with a vaccine so, yeah, so this can't possibly continue forever, this exponential growth. Yeah, one other outcome is everybody could die. And that's a possibility, too. Well, it's not going to happen with us, COVID. But, boy, that Ebola thing a few years ago, that was really scary. They stomped that one out before it spread to the whole world. Okay, questions? Are you all still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, let me give you a definition. Okay. This is for, I'm going to define, and let's see, let me do this color black here. Define for a number A greater than zero and X any real number a to the x to be equal to e to the x ln of a. Okay. That's my definition. That means that 2 to the x is e to the x ln of 2. Now, why does that definition make sense? Well, let's see. We said, and in fact, we even proved for rational numbers, let's see, that if a far is rational,
and it also works for reels. We just didn't prove it for the reels because it's a little bit beyond us. We said that a to the r, okay, is e to the ln of a raised to the r. I mean, yeah, remember, exponentials and logs are inverses of each other. Uh, so e to the ln of a is just a. Took the log of a, and that's why a must be, a has to be positive here, okay. A has to be positive, but e to the ln of a is a. So a to the r is e to the ln of a all to the r. And then we actually at least mention this for the exponential. That's my stupid phone ringing. I can just multiply um, those two exponents together. Okay, so that's why we're making that definition. Um, the derivative of 2 to the x, then, is the derivative of, oops, of e to the x ln of 2, and that's the exponential function raised to a, a power. Oh, I never did say that. Yeah, we did some problems like that Friday. We did. Oh, they're calling back. It's nobody. The derivative of e raised to a function by the chain rule is e to the g of x times g prime of x. Okay, that's just the chain rule applied to the exponential function. Okay, so this derivative then is e to the x ln of 2, because e to, yeah, that e to the g of x is still in there, multiplied by the derivative of x ln of 2, ln of 2 is just a number, a constant. So it's about 0.69. Uh, it's not rational, but it's a perfectly good number. So I treat it like a constant, okay? So this is x times a constant. Its derivative is just ln of 2. And then replacing the e to the x ln of 2 with 2 to the x again. The derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to the x times ln of 2. So you have that extra constant. e to the x follows the same pattern. It works. This is e to the x times ln of e. But ln of e is equal to 1. This is what makes this base e natural. Okay, you don't need another constant. How am I doing on time? Okay, I guess. Um... What's 2 to the minus x? What does that look like? And I would use that other graph, but it's kind of gotten messy. With all the overlays. Well, it's just 1 over 2 to the x. Okay, that's another way to look at it. But let's plot some points. <coughs> Uh, 
to those like before. And you can scratch this down. That's four. Eight. Okay. So two to the minus X would be one over two cubed. Ah, two to the minus X is no, no. <laughs> two to the minus minus three. All right. Two to the minus minus three. So that's two cubed is eight. This is going to be two squared is four. This is going to be two to the first is two to the zero is one. Two to the minus one is a half. Two to the minus two is a fourth. Two to the minus three is an eighth. So what's happening there? Just looking at these points. Well, I'm just going to take the black curve, which was two to the X, and swing it around the Y axis. That's It's going to reverse these points. Okay. So... Okay, Let's see if I can quickly do it here. Uh, one half, one fourth, one eighth. Yeah, so it just swings that thing around the y axis. And that means that the Still got the the x axis the as an asymptote, but it's a positive x axis. Uh, for this one, then the limit as x goes to infinity of two to the minus x is zero. The limit as x goes to minus infinity of two to the minus x is plus infinity but this is oh it's actually a composite i guess composite of an exponential function with the function minus x Hmm. What else do I need to talk about here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's look at the derivative of two to the X and the derivative of X squared. Okay, I'm glad we've already been comparing these two functions. What makes these two functions so different? Well, in two to the X, the variable is in the exponent. I think you might be out of time. I am? Uh, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Was that Daniel? Thank you so much for telling me. Okay, I get so confused with the, it's my other class. That, no, I, I go to 855, don't I? I, well, was what I could be wrong. Um, uh, whatever. This is a good stopping place. I'm going to pick up with this tomorrow. In this function, the variable is in the exponent. The variable in this one is in the base. Okay, big different, big, big difference. That's why their derivatives are so different, but we will talk about that starting tomorrow. I will stop. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you can leave. If you want to hang around and ask questions, you may. We're going to spend probably tomorrow finishing talking about these other bases. And also, we're going to work another 
graphing problem. 